the, the young girls I know, I, I try to encourage them to focus on the thing that's like edifying, you know, that has that, that, that's going to give you back what you put into it. And it's not going to be your look. Hey friends, welcome to Keep It Simple Sexy. I'm Christine Bullock, founder of KO Body Care, certified fitness trainer and mom of two little girls who's just trying to juggle it all and feel as good as possible. I'm so grateful that you're here. Now let's get started, sexy. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful week. I'm your host, Christine Bullock, and welcome back to Keep It Simple Sexy. Today, I have a special guest, Lindsay Price. If you've met her or just follow her on social media, you'll immediately be transformed into a world of beauty and romanticism. Even as a mom of two boys, she's always elegantly dressed. Her home interior reminds me of a dream getaway in the English countryside. And of course, I get caught up in all her wellness and beauty posts. In fact, she's a self-proclaimed beauty junkie, so let's pick her brain today and learn all her tricks she's gained from working with Hollywood's best. Lindsay Price is an American actress, a mom, and an activist whose work you've known from her regular roles on such iconic TV shows as Beverly Hills 90210, Lipstick Jungle, and Eastwick, and more recently Netflix's Atypical and ABC's Splitting Up Together. She's married to top chef Curtis Stone and has two just so cute little boys, 10 and 7 years old. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's so great to see you. You look beautiful today, as always. Oh, Truly, you. like, just even just following you on social media. I mean, your posts are just, they're so romantic. I mean, you're just, it's like you just see the beauty in life and even how you take the photos it's such a self-expression for you. You know what I mean? Like you can see into your soul a bit more than people who just set up this camera. Uh, I don't know. So. Yeah. It's like <laughs> movement and flow. And I don't know why I feel accomplished about my social media, but in some ways it's a funny thing. I, you know, when, when Instagrams came, came up or when it came to my attention, I had just had Hudson. So this is 10 years ago. And one and my my little um, my dad's part business partner's little daughter. She was twenty. She's like, you need to get into Instagram because you can like you don't have to have your books or your magazines when, when you're breastfeeding or whatever. You can have that like window into the world. And I and I started to use it as like that window into the world, but I also started to use it as a little journal. So I never really thought about it being something that I had to manipulate. It truly is like the photography and the snapshot and the writing. And, you know, for me, it really is a creative um, expression. So it's weird that you say that, but that's that's what it's it is. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. The dogs. Oh, my gosh. Her big poodle. Are they poodles, right? Or are they poodle mixes? We thought we were getting um, golden doodles. That's, uh-huh. that's we had a golden yeah. doodle that passed away and we, we couldn't see ourselves having another golden retriever because no one would be like him. So we were like the golden doodle. And then I think we got gypped because they're for sure, for sure, like poodle. They're like, <laughs> 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 my poor husband, he's, you know, Curtis, he's like the six four Aussie and he walks down the street like with two Barbie sized poodles and he's just like, what have you done to me? That's okay. I don't know if it's better. I mean, Bob has two miniature tiny little poodle Bichons. So what's <laughs> <laughs> and a bunny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you? I forget. We were talking about the bunny. Did you ever get a bunny? Uh, the bunny is is um, because of you. I was. Oh, you did get the bunny too. And Priscilla, our friend Priscilla. Yeah, lots of poop. Oh my <laughs> That's god! All I say. <laughs> and hair. <laughs> But they're so sweet and cute. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. See, even the romantic bunny. Well, let's dive in here. We're going to learn all your beauty tips, your hacks, your jewelry edit, all of that kind of stuff. But let's back it up just a little bit. And you started in Hollywood at such a young age. First of all, how old were you? And do you just have any funny stories from acting at such a young age? I started at this is going to sound very bizarre, but I was five when I started, wow. but it was a total accident. Now, my parents weren't in the business. It, it, you know, my dad was a, um, a preacher's kid. My mom was, you know, from Korea. She was an immigrant and, and we were just living in Southern California. And I was, I was very, they describe it as like 
precocious, which I think means like one of those kids that thinks she's a grown up <laughs> and likes to hang out with grown ups and chat with them, you know? And um, they had me in like, you know, piano and um, g- gymnastics. And one of the classes was a ballet class. And the um, there was a famous photographer who was going through and looking for um, ballet studios to do this campaign for Time Magazine for, I think it was like Vivitar cameras or something like that. And um, they saw me in the class and asked my mom if we'd be in this um, in this ad. And she's like, I guess so. But for me, I remember knowing in the moment that when, when this ad was happening, it was my chance to shine. <laughs> it was my chance to like do my performance because I, in that way that you kind of say that I was, I am romantic now. I was for sure just born that way. You know, I, I, I liked the idea of expression. Uh, you weren't shy to express your in, inner self. Yes, exactly. I mean, it was definitely something that I had. Certainly now I look back and I think how bizarre that I started at such a young age, but it just kept happening. So someone saw the ad and then I was a part of like, you know, someone called me for the Toys R Us um, commercial. And did you have like management by that point or anything like that? No, they just got a hold of you. That's great. Yeah. And eventually, you know, we got with a, a child, a children's agent, but my poor mom was just like, it just was this machine that kept going. And then she used it in true tiger mom style to be like a motivator. Like you can go to your audition if you get an A. <laughs> Not straight A. It's anybody, anybody I know. <laughs> That's me. <Yeah. laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, the, the, that, the, the childhood part, which I remember a little bit, but not that much was very ideal. Like it was like, it was like other kids do little league or, you know, some, that was what I did as an extracurricular. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got into sort of my preteens and teens, it was interesting because then I start like my friends were more of the kids that were the like nerdy, weird artists, like the misfits, the actors, the, you know, those kids, rather than the kids in my school who probably didn't relate to me as much because they were much, much cooler than I was. Um, so my friends were like, you know, um, who I'd meet on commercials. Like I met Toby Maguire during a McDonald's commercial and like, he was my friend. And then like my other friends were on big TV shows. And it was, it's strange looking back thinking, um, about the people who went off and became big stars and the ones who didn't make it. And, um, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting youth for sure. Mm hmm. I mean, but it's amazing that you had these experiences and honestly, well, was it once you got to your teen years, it was teen years were tumultuous for me. And I was in, you know, a suburb with horses in my backyard in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I can't imagine being in Los Angeles and then being on screen. What was it like for a kid? I mean, were there any things that happened to you or even just your friends? I mean, maybe it was a breeze for you. I've heard great stories too of people that have just come out fully unmarked from it, you know, no yeah. bad experiences, but teenagers have to be, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, you know, for me, I think the thing that I'm mostly just so grateful for in my lifetime is having the, um, the anchor that I had with, with my family, you know, they Mm -hmm. kept it all really in check. And so growing up, you know, it went from this opportunity for me to play make believe on this really large scale um, to, I started to realize in my teens that beauty was a power Mm -hmm. and that I didn't necessarily look like most of the, the girls that were in the industry. I was the only Asian or half Asian girl in the room. And I started to realize that there was not only limitations, um, but uh, I was forced to kind of be aware of my aesthetic, probably too young, but it put a fire in my belly. And I, and I, I had this underlying drive to prove people wrong. Um, And part of that was that I didn't want to, to suffer the way that I saw a lot of the girls that I did ballet with. I went to a school with a lot of professional dancers. I, 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 one of my best friends was the lead on a television show and um, she was 13, 14. And, you know, we, our Bible was like 17 magazine and like, you know, we didn't have social media, but all we knew is we wanted to look like these, these, these models and not everybody looks like a model, you know, at 13 or 14. And I remember a lot of my friends would only eat frozen yogurt. Do you know what I mean? Like full mm-hmm. on starving, um, because in their minds, they knew they didn't look the way that they wanted to. And I just never had that. I just didn't want to. to, to the drive almost, right? 
<laughs> I thought because I knew I was a, a, a bit of a misfit and I, I knew I was a long shot. I was like, you know what? For me, this is about being the best actor I can be in the room. I'm going to do something that I can actually like control spiritually and rather, you know, like I, I think I had good guidance because um, it could have been a real mess. I get it because, you know, I was pretty much like a pre-professional ballerina from three to like 17 years old. And we were, I was dancing with like the top people and the people that went on, you know, to be the primas and there was so much pressure. So even though it was in Hollywood, it was like the dieting was crazy, but I never, I don't understand why I never jumped into it. I, I understood enough for me to say, I don't think this is the career that I want. Mm -hmm. because if this is the pressures, I'm never going to be able to conform to this. Right. But I feel blessed enough to just be like, I, I'm going to put in the work and I'm going to do what I can. And I'm going to, I don't know, not get into that portion of it somehow. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would, if I don't have daughters, but the, the young girls I know, I, I try to encourage them to focus on the thing that's like edifying, you know, that has that, that that's going to give you back what you put into it. And it's not going to, your looks. And for me, you know, the truth is when, when you asked me this question, I, I immediately thought of my friends because I felt like I didn't suffer that much. But I remember my first, I was, I was only getting guest roles. I was only ancillary characters. The way that I looked, whether it was my ethnicity or my body, and I've never been like someone that was unhealthy, but I've never been a skinny, skinny girl. I remember, um, I was around 22 and I was able to drink wine legally. And I was just like, at that point I was like, you know, might as well have been a like middle age because I'd been working for so long. And I had <laughs> wine and cheese parties with my friends. And I was on a, a show, a big one at the time. I had I'd originally just, I was supposed to do two or three episodes. And then they asked me to be a series regular. And it was the 90210 show, which just so you know, like, Growing up, the, those characters were a year older than I was. So growing up, it was like they were everything, right? So now I'm on this show, and they've asked me to be a series regular. And I'd, and I'd had a long career before, but this was my, my first moment where I realized, okay, it's syncing up. What a what dream I, and pressure, though. Yeah. Yes. And the, the, the season that I was the, a series regular, I, we were like two or three episodes in. And one of the producers called me in to the to his office, and I had I hadn't been called in to the office, and um, he said, "Listen, you know, um, I really think that if you were to drop a few pounds, and you know, look really like a leading lady, we'd be able to really write for you." And and you know, and he's like, "And you're not the only one. Like we've told this one and that one. Some of the other actresses on the show." And so, you know, we just kind of keep it in check because the show is, you know, about Beverly Hills and like this aspirational. So we just want clothes to look amazing and for you to be like a leading lady because you are one now. And I remember thinking, yay, I am one now, but also what in the, what in the world are you trying? Like you're saying that my, a leading lady means that in order to tell a real story, I have to be, and by the way, I was five foot seven and probably about 140 pounds. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just yeah. like, how am I supposed to? I was wearing a size six. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. And this was 2000, so it was like Y2K. Everyone was real thin. Like, oh, yeah. I knew how dangerous it was. Like, what I was looking at. It was the first time that I ever thought about a diet. You know, and so I saw a nutritionist, and it was the first time that I I went from just being happy in my skin to you know, it's been. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's been a little bit of a push pull my whole life trying to figure out. How to be you think with it's from to that a little bit though too. It's not from that in, in, in that that specific moment, but that was the first moment that they said something to me about my body as a part of my sort of um, what my success and marketability yeah. would be as a leading lady. Yeah. And look, we all we all know that that's like for some reason why the overall it? worth almost it was associated to. I mean, to the show, but that right. was like the first big role that where it put it all together for you too. Like you know, yeah. And that's it. It's so funny. I did it. I did. I I ended up going to see a nutritionist, and she. But at least you went to a nutritionist. That was so smart. I was like, I was like, I'm not sure. That's ahead of the the yeah. gang. Yeah, don't drink wine. Okay, but it was like um. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, yeah, low carbs was the first time that low carbs was a thing and it just came right off. And, and then I went 
to work the, the, you know, following season with like this, I was like, I did it. And they made me pregnant. (laughs) 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 Nothing is predictable in this life. You just got to go with what you know your flow is, you know? Well, let's talk about, let's dive into the nutrition then. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you're married now to a world renowned chef, Curtis Stone, who, by the way, also, I have his cookware. It's the best cookware if anyone is interested. Uh, and it's always been my dream, like screw athletes, a six pack, whatever, which people ask me all the time, like, oh, are you married to like train or whatever? I'm like, no, but my dream would be a chef. <laughs> and so, but how do you now balance everything? I mean, I've been to his restaurants. There's Maude, there's Gwen, you know, more. How do you balance all that? Wine, steak, deliciousness, healthy fats, bone marrow. I have it there with just a balanced lifestyle. Yeah. So you it's chop not raw easy. carrots at home? <laughs> it's not. I mean, you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll back it up. So when we first met, he, um, he sort of got me because we had gone on one date and he noticed that I drank, um, I drank like an island scotch. It was Lagavulin. and he was like, this lady is drinks scotch. That's terrifying, but also so cool. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the next date, he invited me into his house, and I was like, oh, yeah, like for a nightcap, what's this going to be? And he pulled out a, a whiskey um, chocolate mousse. So he had noticed something that I liked, and then he, you know, like the match. It was, yeah, and, he, and I was hooked. But look, it is his way, love language. It is. And the way he shows his love is yeah. to do to nurture. So it's been very hard for me, especially while he was coming up with his restaurants or through COVID. Like, you know, yeah, I was just, just, oh my gosh, we just, you know, it was like this beautiful bubble of what, what you would imagine like it would be. It was, you know. Um, mm-hmm. It's sexy and it's romantic and it's 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 also I know that's how he shows love, but I have had to say to him, you you have to understand like we both we're not like twenty anymore like we can't just go for it we need to have a balance and that's really what it is it's like anything else like I know that six days a week I do what's what works for me, and I have that one beautiful day where we do whatever you know, our little hearts desire. And because of that one day, the rest of my days during the week work. It's, mm-hmm. it's that, that ratio that really works for me. And I know that the healthy choices that I make are, are manageable because it's not like, it's not like this extreme end of the world sort of thing. And he and I recently, especially after COVID decided that we were going to like get into the best shape of our lives. He's doing better than me. Like now he's like boxing. I hate to say, but men always like bounce back so much faster. Fast, yeah. Yeah. Bob will just decide to like, you know, do like intermittent fast fasting at night and just like, drops everything. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, that's when I start putting like spam and stuff like that hidden in his foods. I'm like, just, just balance it a little bit, buddy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I won't do that to him. <laughs> this is one of those guys that once he sets his mind to something, he really does oh, yeah. it. And the, and the good news I'm is- I'm more balanced too. I'm like, okay, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Enjoy. Very like, it's interesting also because he's, you know, he used to be a chef like on The Biggest Loser and he knows so much about quality pro- um, produce and like hormones and food. And and so I think, you know, it's true what they say about, you know, people that live in, in other countries and they don't have as many preservatives and all of the, yeah. the nasty stuff. Like, you know, it's just much easier. So even though we might be eating some like, pretty amazing like fatty things I think we keep it in check because of the quality of the the type of food that we eat and even cooking for yourself too is a huge yeah. deal right because yeah. you put time into doing it so hopefully you take the time in eating it as well. so much cleaner yeah than the oils and stuff like that that you have no idea what people are putting in there the keep it simple sexy podcast is brought to you by KO body care By now, you guys know I'm all about simple wellness habits, and the most important habit, in my opinion, is eating lots of fruits and veggies to boost your immunity and feel energized and youthful. The only problem, if you're as busy as I am, you're probably eating a lot of meals on the run. So I'm going to fill you in on my favorite hack. 
KO Body Care's clean, plant-based supplements. As the founder and CEO of KO Body Care, we spent so long getting these formulas perfect. And our customers are just as obsessed with them as I am. Our best seller right now is our Vital Green Superfood Powder Drink Mix. Every scoop contains 25 superfoods that optimize your cellular health and performance. There's organic greens, antioxidant-rich berries, curcumin, and immune complex, and so much more. Unlike most green powders, this one doesn't taste like grass, guys. It's got a sweet berry flavor that even my kids love. Seriously, my oldest asks for it every day. Day. Vital Green Superfood Powder is a staple in my pantry and in the KO collection. And when you try it, you'll know why. Order yours today at kobodycare.com and make sure to use your special code KISS20 for 20% off your first purchase. Well, you've also mentioned within nutrition that, you know, in I mean, you were saying even at Beverly Hills 90210, you sought a, a nutritionist first off, which is just so genius for such a young age um, and being in the pressures of Hollywood and knowing how things can turn there. But you've mentioned how Kelly Levesque and her Be Well programming has kind of been your holy grail in nutrition. Are you still following her method? And honestly, I don't know what it consists of. What is it that speaks to you and your lifestyle? Yeah, no, much like you, she's... um... She's science-based, you know, she's not a fad and she's intellectually driven. And I really like that about her because I feel like everyone's like, how am I going to lose the weight? And how do I stay young? And how do I stay healthy? It's, there's, there's no, it's not a magic, like theoretical thing. It's, there's, there's science to it. And she was a, a researcher for cancer. And I really, for me, what really works is that she, um, it's not depriving myself. It's from a perspective of wellness across the board. You know, it's, it's, it's in a perspective of loving myself and then the benefits of it are, are the perk. You know, I've got a fit body and I, and I, and I like the way I look in clothes, but you can almost see the reverse aging because it really is about the wellness aspects of it. It's that fab for, you know, fats, proteins, fibers, like it just made, it made a lot of sense for me and her attitude is very, um, optimistic. It's not from that deprivation, you know, mind frame. So yeah, it's amazing when, when you, when you get the right, the, the facts, how easy it actually, you know, can be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of common sense, right? Clean foods, like you said, too, preparing it yourself. Um, yeah. So let's complement this with some fitness because, right. you know, as you said, you guys are now to focusing in, and I know I've, we've talked about it too, the different kind of fitnessing program. I've seen you do them on your social media too. Like I'm sure you've experienced so many of the trends that have happened out here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. What do you love and what do you feel like you just speaks to you and your body? Just an enjoyment. Yeah, I know I've tried everything, A, because I'm curious about everything, but also I think it's good to sort of switch it up a little bit, you know, and and find something that's a challenge or a different way of moving your body. But for me, the thing I always come back to is the rebounding workouts. I just, I originally started with with Lauren Kleban at LuckFit, and then I moved to mm -hmm. the West Side, and she's too far for me to get to. So I um I I work with um Justine from Formation, and she's just the same thing. She's got that like that that studied she knows how the body works but the rebounding and sort of the dance based um workout it just keeps me motivated i love the um lymphatic benefits of, of rebounding strangely everyone's like oh i can't do that i've had two two kids but actually it's no it's a low impact or almost no impact um and i feel like i it, it just really works for my time and and the effectiveness those, those particular workouts and you're right. I, I absolutely love it. I have a rebounder here. been doing it for so, I mean, I think I was on like VH1 Live almost 10 years ago now, something like that when it actually existed, right. you know, showing the benefits of rebounding. But it is, it's like, it's, I forget what the quotes are that I actually used on that show many, many years ago, but it's like, you get as much of a workout in 20 minutes and you do like in an hour of running. That's so true. yeah, and the for us to, for women especially too, especially if had babies, we have like osteoporosis because the babies take our calcium. 
It actually builds your bone density. So it's really great for our bone density. It's great for creating more ancillary muscles, which create that beautiful kind of sculpted physique all over way more core every time you bounce. And the same thing, um, you know, for people with babies and they're fearful that they may like peer their pants or something like that, which I had a full, we have a full episode that just aired last week on this. Um, it's been happening to me, but it's funny. I go, and especially now six and a half months pregnant, the pressure is there again. Um, I actually take a lot of my cardio dance and all of that onto the rebounder now because it is less pressure. It absorbs the pressure instead of you just hitting and pounding. Mm -hmm. And um, like, as you said too, for your lymphatics, it's so priceless, yeah. which is going to boost your metabolism in the long run. Anyway, detox because it's detoxifying at the cellular level mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis. So I agree. I think it, could and should be in everybody's workout at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, I love it. And there's so many ways you can use a rebounder too. Like you can use it as the ballet bar, turn it on its side. You can use it for push-ups, even, you know, a little elevation. I love that. It's, yeah. it's really, it is, it's a perfect little, especially for at home, you know, through COVID and being able to stream the classes and have just a little space that I needed and not a lot of equipment. It's, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And just like Peloton, and you know, I, I do that for yeah. my cardio, and I and I and I really find that for me, a part of what Kelly had told me was that, um, and maybe you can explain this better than I can. I know you can, but <laughs> I do and I do intermittent intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. um, especially when I'm you know trying to to drop some extra pounds or I need a little reset. Um, and she told me to work out fasted in the morning because it boosts. Fat burning. Fat burning. Yes. Fat burning. Because you're, you're automatically, your body's automatically going to go to the fat for the calories that it needs to provide you the energy. Right. And typically non-pregnant or just before I had really young kids, I love to do that. And that's what I would do. And, you know, people always ask me if I eat the peanut butter or a bananas in the morning and I, I want to get straight to it. I don't feel great on food anyway, but I want to get straight into burning the fat because in my forties with my hormonal condition too, everything stores right away. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is the fat. It's not necessarily some extra calories that I burned or a long-term, I'm not marathon running, right? And I need the energy for it. Right. It made a huge difference. And even if I just, like, I'll get up, get the kids to school, come home, ha you know, have my coffee on the way to school, and I come back, and even if I just do a, a high-intensity interval on the Peloton, it's mm -hmm. 20 minutes, but it changes it changes everything for the rest of, of, of the day and, and, and the way that my clothes start to fit and, and the number on the scale and all of it. It's, it's a huge, huge difference. So good for your digestive system. It cleanses everything, your beauty in the long run because of that, like just pure, you know, aging reversal, all of that, or aging prevention. It is, it is, I think one of the best things we can do and it, it can be balanced. You can eat some mornings. That's totally fine. Right. As long as we're starting to include it to help that detoxification of the body too. People have uh, to understand it though because they think, oh my God, like you're working out that hard and you're not eating and it seems like it would be something that's off. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's like psychotic a little bit. Yeah. No, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it feels great. And then you go and eat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice cleansing workout. Yeah. All right. So we talked nutrition. Let's talk beauty now. We'll get into all your beauty tips. Right. You are a self-proclaimed beauty junkie, yeah. you know. You were, wait, there's, I've heard you're obsessed with like lotions and potions for as long as you can remember. And I read that as a kid, you would ride your bike to the drugstore and use your allowance to purchase the latest lip balms. Yeah. That <laughs> That's so cute. Lip balms too. <laughs> <laughs> Got the pepper flavored one. And the, oh yeah. <laughs> that was the, the best one. Balms. Yeah. No, I, I don't know why. I just have always been obsessed with it. And, and mm -hmm. I think, um, Probably also looking back, you know, reading like the teen magazines and the 17 magazines, oh, yeah. that's, that's what I went into. And I'd read the advertisements and I was just like, they've got me. They had me hooked. But um, I've also just really liked figuring out what, what the best of the best is. And I'm so lucky having been on countless sets and, um, you know, photo shoots and sh shows that were really about beauty. Um a good, good portion of my life. I kind of, I was exposed to everything. So it was a nice little meeting of worlds, you know, like my original passion and, and, and then what I actually was, was, you know, presented with. 
it's the original violet gray. I mean, we still hear from like our makeup artists, our hair artists, and you're with them so much more because they're working with another person who has the access to the best and, and who have to use it on all these different skin tones. So to see who it's really working on, you know, yeah. and that you have these like personal recommendations. So yes, what, absolutely. what do we need? What are some beauty products or what are spa spas that you love to go to or treatment centers? I mean, any hacks that you have, any devices that you may have or that you love in treatment, home devices, hair. I don't okay. I want all the secrets. Okay. Um, I oscillate a little bit between the theory of being completely clean and also doing things that are <laughs> more science-based, you know, yeah. more like uh, woo-woo stuff. Um, um, but I will say that one thing that, that I, I have done since I was a kid is my skincare routine. Like I used to, my mom used to sell a product called Alouette. It was like an aloe based product, kind of like a Mary Kay. She'd have all the ladies over to the house. And I was just obsessed with like the masks and the, you know, I never went to bed without washing my face. And this time I was probably like 11. And I'm finding now as I've gone through many different stages, you know, back when I was in my twenties, I used to have crazy acne because I would work long hours on the set and get like clogged pores and whatnot. So I'd take care of my skin one way, you know, back then, but I'll just, I'll tell you what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, I be really believe in the, um, the sort of K-beauty trend of double cleansing. Do you double cleanse? I, I do actually. <laughs> okay. I found that was a game changer and I know like, I could barely single cleanse or cleanse at all most nights. I didn't know this was like a trend. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean, the girls in my world are sort of talking about, they're like, oh my God, but it's the, it's the oil-based cleanser first. Yeah. And then the, you know, like more, I, I, I use a, a um, I think the company is called Ma Neo, N-Y-O, it's a Korean company. And their mm -hmm. two cleansers are brilliant. One's the, the oil cleanser, takes off all your makeup, loosens it up. And then the other one's got like a baking soda element to it. Oh, so yeah, on, on days that I've been wearing makeup and I really do need a double cleanse. Otherwise I go straight to the biologic Recher. I just feel like that line is, I just think it's the creme de la creme, creme de la creme. <laughs> um, so I always use that, their um, uh, P P50, their exfoliator. Oh yeah, uh, the that smell one. brings me back, man. Right. But it is, if I start to break out again too, I immediately like go purchase that again, but it is such, and it brings so much oxygen and blood flow to the skin. I will say for anybody that's never heard of Biologique Recherche too, even, I guess it's over a decade ago now, oh my gosh, 12 years ago when I was working in spas around the world, the best ones all exclusively, not exclusively, but it was like less well known then. And it was like this secret and everybody used Biologique Recherche. That was like their secret to gorgeous skin. So it's great. I just don't know. I'm not exactly sure why. It, I think at this stage in my life, the products that I, and the woman that I went to see is, do you know, you're not Zilber. Mm -hmm. She's a facialist. Mm -hmm. No, she, so she only carries this particular line. She, she might carry a few more things, but this is predominantly. She's in Los Angeles. Yes. And she kind of looks at your, she looked at my skin and said, you know, I know you're using C and I know you're using, your, you know, retinols and but let's, let's adjust it a little bit, you know? And so she can kind of be like a, um, she'll sort of Have mess up your face and, and mm -hmm. diagnose what you need so I kind of just do what she tells me to do um, she's brilliant but I but I do I'm 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 also pretty certain that the reason people always comment on my skin is I used retinol from the time I was really young because I had the skin issues right and now it's like you know, everyone's using retinol for for anti-aging but back then I, I had had to use it isn't yeah, I did too. No, I did too. Back. So when I started working at one of the first Sephora's when I was 20 years old, 19 or 20, and I would ask the women that had the most beautiful skin at all different ages, like, what is your secret? And the top secret was they started using retinol at an early age. Amazing. So yeah, you know, it's probably not great for you because we can't use it when we're pregnant. And, you know, I understand what, what the deal is, but I do think that that was just to give me a little bit of a upper hand from mm -hmm. the young yeah. Is there a, a, do you do a prescription retinol or is there a brand that you love? I, I did. so strong. Yeah. So I was getting a prescription and I, and for my dermatologist and he would have me cut it with just like a basic, you know, like almost like a Cetaphil 
lotion. Mm -hmm. um, now I really like um, Shani Darden's. I think hers is amazing. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Do you use that one? Um, yeah, I do use that one. It's very, it's gentle. It's very gentle, and you sort of just wake up like, like the results are fast. You kind of wake yeah. up and you look better. And I notice when I don't use it. And then I use um, Dr. Laura Devgan. Do you know her products? She's yeah. She's got cheap little, you know, um, sort of apothecary style, style droppers. And I use her mm -hmm. Hyaluronic and her C and her Retinol. But I switch them. I don't use them all at once. I sort of switch them. I use the Hyaluronic every, every day. Amazing. I haven't used that brand yet, but I, I, keep, I always see it. So I want to try it. A friend of mine was was um, using her products. And I know she's a doctor that's in New York. I don't do a ton mm -hmm. of the other stuff, you know, like all the, the needles and stuff. I'm afraid yeah. to... And it's not that I, you know, I'm against it. I'm just a bit afraid of like not, of not looking like myself. And I'm all about the lasers. I'm all, give me all the PRP. Give me all the, you know. Oh, is that um, what you do? Yeah. I haven't done the PRP too. Like what kind of treatments do you like that are a bit more or less invasive, I guess, you know? There's, I, I really like um, the, I, it's called the Spectra laser that I've used my, there's a, clinic that is a friend of mine and they're in Pasadena called Rejuvu and the doctors, he does all this stem cell research and he's just such an oh, a, cool. a alter nerd. He's so smart. And so, and he's beautiful, his skin and his wife is beautiful. And they do a lot of like um, stem cell stuff with, with children, but they, they help people with their complexion as well. So I did the PRP. I did um, the spectral lasers. I think it's like, it's not a photo facial. I get really bad, um, I don't wrinkle as much as I get sun damage. It's, yeah, it's, that's what I get too. Yes, and the melasma mm -hmm. after the babies, um, and he's able to sort of manage that with particular types of lights and lasers. So I'm all, for, I'm all for it. That's awesome. We had um, a guest on talking about glutathione. So I'll have to pass that information along to you too, because it helps to brighten the melasma naturally. There was another actress on the show talking. She's the one that referred this, you know, doctor to, mm -hmm. yeah, it's called mm -hmm. RO wellness. It's amazing. Okay. I'll pick your brain. Cause that's the one <laughs> Cause I feel like I wouldn't wear makeup and I wouldn't really worry about it. If I didn't, like I have symmetrical, I know it's melasma cause it's symmetrical. You know, you just have gorgeous skin. Gorgeous. You're glowing. If you're not watching the YouTube portion of this, guys, you have to tune in. It's just absolutely glowing, beautiful. I hate to say the word perfect, but it is. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Um, well, I mentioned about spas, too. I will yeah. say, thinking about recently, the first, like, wellness spa that I went to that changed my life was a spa in Desert Hot Springs called We Care. Do you know this? Place? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I don't know that much about it, yeah. It's, um, it's a... I had an ulcer at the time and the doctors were saying, you know, just take this medication and you're going to be just fine. And I instinct, my instinct was to say, don't take it. Like you have to figure out what this ulcer is and where it's coming from and how not to get one again. And so someone told me to go to We Care and it's a place you go again um, for fast, for fasting. It's like an eight day long fast, but they, it's, they have classes and, um, and in conversations that absolutely changed my life. I met Dr. Um, Younger. Do you know Dr. Younger who wrote the clean book? Um, mm -hmm. I did, I did breath work for the first time there. Um, it's got one of the best spas that I've ever been to in my life as far as just body treatments and that kind of thing. But the whole idea of they were, they, their theory is that your body, basically your, the enzymes in your body, the more you have, the more alive you are, and the less you have, the more dead you are, essentially. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. You don't use those enzymes to break down um, bad foods or even food, you know, food at all or the pres preservatives. Like we're not really getting the nutrition that we need if we don't like heal our gut and we don't um, give our bodies a second to, to reset. Now I'm someone who loves food. So it's like the fasting thing is not my, it's not, it's not like my natural wheelhouse, but I went and it literally changed my life. So about once, once a year, I like to go and get a total reset and there's just I'm something. I'm coming with you next time. We, In, can we go after this baby? Maybe yeah. September. Actually, I mean, I have to breastfeed this baby a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's unreal. And the woman who, who runs it, who came up with it, this woman, Susanna, she's, I think she's probably in her mid eighties now. And she's still like, you just wouldn't believe the way she looks and she's just well, you know, That's and so much like energy. Always, you can tell from somebody internally, you know, the 
positive energy that they're giving out, all of that. Right. We're made of all of that. Yeah. And eating more alive foods, like, you know, they were the first ones to tell me that plants are essentially like, it's almost the same pH as our, as our blood. So you could essentially like, you know, not really, but it was almost like giving yourself a blood transfusion when you eat those live leafy things and also give your body a chance to reset and detoxify from the bad things that we do to ourselves, including stress. Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing you can do too, so it's like chlorophyll basically. So the little side boost too is you could be drinking. That's why so many of these wellness practitioners that we see everywhere have chlorophyll, spirulina, those that's all of that too. I mean, you have to eat the foods as well, but that's a good way to give yourself a super easy boost. That's true. And and the and the alkalinity, I didn't realize how important the alkalinity in your body is and what's acidic. They gave, you know, they showed us like this wheel of 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 things that are the most acidic and obviously, you know, coffee, alcohol, but like stress is way up there. And mm-hmm. The things that, of course, you know instinctually that your body's going to have a hard time processing. And then the things that were really good, actually some surprises like lemons, you'd think they'd be acidic. They were the highest alkalinity. You know, little little science tricks that I loved, you know, learning that really made a difference for me at that at that spa. So let's go. Or, or dairy is very acidic in the body, but alkaline outside the body. Right. So. Yeah, which all leads to ulcers and stuff, you know. That's the thing is I was eating a lot of dairy. I'm not good with dairy. And and the way that they say it too is, you know, we're the – and I will eat a wheel of brie right now, let me just tell you. Like I'm not yeah. anti-dairy, but I do have to really balance everything. But we're the only animal that eats, you know, that drinks milk from another animal. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not – it's, it does well, I think uh, – yeah, yeah, I think we are. Yeah. And, we, um, and it's not exactly – right for our digestive systems. So the way they say it, right, is that that builds up sort of like this calcification in your intestines. And and, and even if you're eating really healthy and you're a super like healthy person, you're not getting the nutrition because the little holes in your intestines and the villi, they're like, they're like, they're like, they're not able to absorb the nutrition. And I was like, that's incredible. So when you give yourself a chance to, they do colonics, they give you the right sort of diet and fasting to sort of reset your you're, you're, I, don't know, I don't know exactly the magic that, you know, happens, but um, it makes a huge difference. You just feel I, so energized. for. Quite- I'm amazed that you remember Vilai. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a great comparison. You are truly right. It's like clogging up the drain and then you're not getting the yeah. nutrients. That is, you know, has an effect on your beauty, on your aging, on the diseases that we have, the symptoms, mm-hmm. our mood. I mean, it really does affect everything just purely in even just the start of our digestive system, like you're saying. It is good to go on these cleanses, though. I mean, some are crazy. We care I've heard of before. There's so much wisdom and something like that. That's how you want to go and do it. It's I don't think that necessarily like a week-long juice cleanse from your local juicer that they've been sitting on that shelf for a long time is doing that much for you. If you're going to do it, you save up those funds and you go, because this is your health. I mean, if there's anywhere that it's going to, should be spent on, you know, you, a place like this is truly amazing to just transform your life and your health. Yeah. It's, I know there's a lot of like backlash, you know, um, Kim Kardashian saying, oh, she lost a bunch of weight, you know, two weeks. It's wrong. It is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Um, it's a da- dangerous conversation to have or to, to not it, not have rather. But yeah. I think um, it, if you have a healthy relationship to food, you know. The, and the- these aren't really about losing weight too. I mean, that's the thing. That was the dangerous portion of that, I think, is that this is about resetting your body. Will you lose weight? Probably. Will you gain it back though? Potentially, even with healthy foods right afterwards. So don't make it about that. It's about resetting detoxifying the body, resetting everything to be almost like a younger version of yourself internally before we, you know, kind of we eat, add the cheeses and the wines and everything back if we're just living a balanced kind of normal lifestyle too. Well, let's talk your jewelry edit too. Oh, yeah. I love this. You've gotten into the jewelry edit. We're always talking jewelry. You're always wearing beautiful pieces. And now you are part of this. And I was reading about it and it's like, Basically, it's taking older fashion or older jewelry and remaking it into new jewelry because the fashion industry is so wasteful. It is. We're so wasteful in general. You know, we just, we are, we've, 
we don't think about what we can do beyond recycling or driving an electric car. There's so many more things we can do, you know, to, to be sustainable. Um, I met the, the, the founder of the jewelry edit, actually, she was a um, jewelry designer and she designed some beautiful cuffs that I wore in this show, Lipstick Jungle, that was all about fashion. And I always remembered them and she and I became friends sort of via the magic of social media. And when she she came to me and she said, I really want you to be a part of, um, of the jewelry edit and become our resident stylist. And I got invested uh, even more with her because I just love what she was doing. She's every single designer she carries, we carry, is a, is a designer that has a um, ethical and sustainable um, mission statement. And also she's she highlights um, designers of, of uh, diversity. So um, this month is um, Asian American um, Heritage Month. So we're highlighting a bunch of her amazing designers that are um, – um, Asian and, and also sustainable, but we just recently, she had me clean out my closet and I pulled out like all of the costume stuff that was just like tangled and broken and, or things that I wouldn't wear. Cause it was from like a weird ex-boyfriend or something. <laughs> and I took all of that stuff and I mailed it to her and she had all these people mail her all their, like, you know, just sort of junk. And they had a giant exhibit at the, um, the jewelry library recently and the New York times wrote about it. And it's, 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 it's incredible to think of the beauty that can come out of something that used to be. And I also like the romance of those stories as well. Um, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what the jewelry edit is. It's basically like a, a, a violet gray or an, or a, um, a, a revolve for jewelry. So if you were trying to like curate the perfect necklace stack or, you know, someone was wearing really great stacks of things on their bracelet, you know, on their, on their bracelets, you know, they help you edit and style your look. So. Oh, I love that. So they actually help you style it too. That's amazing. But your jewelry, I see you all the time and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need this. I need this. <laughs> it's so pretty. And there's all different, you know, different styles too that you have. Like I've seen you work right. from simple to, I don't even want to say a little bit more costumey, but a little bit more dressy. You pull it off like with some jeans, you know, <laughs> But it's, they're beautiful pieces. Yeah. You could get to have fun with it. You can wear something simple and really spruce it up. Yeah. It feels even better knowing where it comes from, you know, knowing that it comes yeah. from a good place. Like even gold is unethically sourced these days. And sometimes it's good to have something that's in that price point as well, where you're, you know, finding something that you like to wear and it gives you a little sparkle, but it's not necessarily breaking the bank, you know? That's awesome. I mean, we were talking about clean skincare. We talk a lot about clean beauty on here, toxicity in our foods and stuff, but it's the same thing. And we have to think about it in, in our fashion and wherever where our purchasing power is going. And now in our jewelry as well is how can we um, be kind to Mother Earth as well and in turn be kind to all of us too. It all adds up. Welcome to The Jewelry Edit, a website that combines a personalized approach to jewelry buying with a deep commitment to diversity, inclusion, and sustainability. The Jewelry Edit carries 50 plus ethically made jewelry brands, all with a unique story to tell and mostly focused on small batch hand fabricated collections made with recycled metals. Recently, they were featured in the New York Times for crowdsourcing 100 pounds of broken and unwanted jewelry and turning them into upcycled creations. Their founder, Rosina Sami, a jewelry designer who grew frustrated by the fast fashion movement, is focused on encouraging people to be more thoughtful about the jewelry they buy and elevating the voices of diverse designers like herself. Their resident stylist is Lindsay Price, who brings the glam to all her jewelry edits. I love to follow and see what the next edit is myself. Visit thejewelryedit.com and enjoy 15% off by using the coupon code KEEPITSIMPLE15. That's KEEPITSIMPLE15 at thejewelryedit.com. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's do like a couple little speed rounds here. Okay. So we already talked breakfast or fasting, which is sometimes one of our questions, but sometimes you're fasting and sometimes you're not. I love it. That's right. Um, when do you feel most beautiful? Mm. There's two answers, okay? Because there's the beautiful that I feel that's probably the most um, important one. And that's when I'm with 
the boys and, and Curtis, you know, it's um, my little one just said to me the other day, I got to tell you something. It's really serious. You need to stop wearing lipstick. He was like <laughs> so much prettier mom when you first wake up. And it just was, it was, it was the kind of beauty that you want to be seen um, the lens that you want to be seen with, but I'm not going to lie. No. It's so bad. I love it. They're just, those boys, they're, they're amazing. They're um, so sweet. Yeah, they're pretty. They, they make me feel, they make me feel really, really good, you know, and I, and I know you're not supposed to put your self-worth in another person, even your own children, but to have that sort of honesty um, and purity daily like that mm -hmm. is, it's beyond. I can't even, it's beyond. But I'm not going to lie. I also feel really beautiful when I've got a whole team of glam and they've got the fan on me and it's like the photo shoot. Like, you you know. Well, I'm you do. You look good, girl. With like that, like I said, when you photograph it too, like, like with the wallpaper in the back and like, you know, then your dress kind of goes with it and your hair is like that beautiful wave. Like, yeah. I love the little glam. I love. I'm. I just love it. And but I you're so good at it. Your gowns, everything. It's so. Be you just look so beautiful. So effortlessly beautiful. Thank you. When you're getting all dolled up, or when you're just waking up. So. <laughs> I love them, but I like them. <laughs> I like it. It's the truth. We all do. It's we deserve it. What is one thing that you're currently working on to improve in your life or a personal goal? Oh. I've had a real, I've, it's, you know, as, as much knowledge as I've gained in, in my life with wellness, with nutrition, after everything that you and I have just spoken about, for some reason, there's something in turning 45 or having a certain transition in my life. I've, I've got a lot of like negative self-talk and I don't exactly know where it's coming from. I think I'm just it happened also when I was like 29 and I, ha I had my like midlife crisis at 29. I, I'm, past, I'm past that. It's just, I think I'm in a transition of, 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 of growth. And I think I'm, I'm uncomfortable with certain aspects of my life and I'm, and I'm pushing myself to the next stage. But the negative self-talk is like, you could do better. You could work harder. Um, you know, you're lazy. Uh, you know, no. Um, <laughs> No, you know the what I mean? Opposite of that, but I know. Yeah, part I get of it. Myself lately, and I think it's par partially it's just that there's a lot of demands. It's really difficult to, even within my house, you know, give all the attention that I need to those three boys. I mean, I've got my two little ones, but I've also got my big one. And oh, yeah, you know, get it. You know what I mean? It's constant output. And then I feel, then I take the moment for myself, and whether it's a bath or some kind of self care that, you know, like I think. But sometimes it doesn't seem like enough within the midst of it. Cause when we're taking our self-care, we're also, we're just thinking about them. <laughs> True, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Multi board or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think, I think through, through the pandemic, I, I went through a real like change. I went through a real shift where things that used to fill me up as, as a woman, like feeling beautiful and sexy and, and all that just, it didn't, I wasn't able to go to a set and be creative I wasn't going out with my girlfriends and, you know, laughing. Yeah. And I certainly was, was being, um, it was more output than, than things that were filling me up. So I think I'm in a, in a stage of just trying to like catch up and, and make sure that I'm getting my life back and, you know, it's, or learn it's, because I feel like it's changed a little bit too. And that's the hard part is that the things that had done that, at least for me had filled me up don't even fill me up as much anymore. And so it's this little bit of like now trying to find the transition of what is doing that as well. And I will say for you, I feel like the fives, I end up going through that a little bit more for me. 29 was a little hard, but it was actually 25. It was 35. And I imagine I just turned 40 this year, but I imagine it's going to be 45 because you feel yourself going to this like other side of it. Yeah. What is this next phase, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's really, um, it's exciting. Yeah. I've never felt afraid of, of, of what age is for a woman. Like, I really do feel like some of the most beautiful women. Have you seen Helena Christensen? You know, like, you just, 
I'd be, I'd look like her any day over, you know, one of these young girls on Instagram, but I, I'm not afraid of what that does. I'm afraid of sort of the, the aspects of time, you know, and what I want to accomplish and can I be present, you know, and just like time's clicking by kids. and, and kids like can't, you know, Enjoying them. yeah. And like the stupid cell phone and having to like be in that, that is not being on your phone is not being present. Yeah. And if you're not present, you're going to miss it, you know? So those, those sorts of things I'm really working on because I don't want to live the rest of my life, you know, in a state of just not, not being fulfilled with what I have right now. Yeah. You know? And I am so blessed, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to recognize it all. Does that make well, that's sense? Beautiful. That, yeah. And it's beautiful. I mean, even though negative talk isn't the best thing, sometimes it's a little kick in the butt for ourselves. We're doing it to ourselves. Do you know what I mean? To get to the next spot. Yeah. And that's what's so, that's why I wanted to bring you on the show and just knowing you, you are, you are present. You're present when you speak to everybody that you meet, even at big events and stuff like that, eye contact, listening. Um, but yeah. It goes to show since you're 22 and and somebody tried to tell you to a negative comment, really, you know, to change your body. You were like, let's um, think about this wisely. And how can I involve this into something positive when you had an ulcer? How I'm not going to just dive into this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to think about this and and truly turn this into something positive. So no doubt, Lindsay, too, the 45, wherever you're trying to get to, it's, it's gonna, there already. It's there. Yeah. You know, we all will, all of us, everybody tuning in, too. It's as long as you dive in, you know, yeah. and we all go through these. Um, we should go through changes. We, we should, should go through growth. And it is it's uncomfortable sometimes. It is. I'm trying to figure out exactly you know, I think for me, it's it's an aspect of just always wanting to be in some sort of creative state, yes. you know. And so, I think that's the most of the, the negative self talk is like, how can you be more of who you want to be? But I think like something really good is coming for you. I you are your creative oh, soul. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, you. yeah, we can see it. I mean, from the social media, the jewelry edit to writing to acting you know but there's a beautiful science to it from you as well sort of just have to think it through a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. or just be creative <laughs> yeah, yeah. throw some paint girl <laughs> right like I really do realize the, the the more life I live I realize that it's not one or the other it's both it's yes and do you know what I mean like I just think that balance in all the aspects of your life, it sounds so cliche, but it really makes all the difference in the world, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm science and nerdy, but I'm also straight from the heart, you know? So I have to kind of balance it out a little bit um, throughout all aspects of my life. So. Well, you do yeah. it. You do it beautifully. Thanks. Yes. And gracefully as well. Well, thank you, Lindsay, for being part of the show and sharing all your wisdom. I'm so excited for all of our guests to be able to meet you. Yes, you guys have to follow Lindsay at Lindsay J. Price. It's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-J-P-R-I-C-E to um, get all of continue to get all of her tips. The website, too, for the jewelry is thejewelryedit.com. And have a beautiful day, Lindsay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So good talking with you. Let's go to, talk to, to eat dinner. Have that. Okay. Day. Yes. I'm so in. I was going <laughs> to go to eat, but yeah, I'm totally into the week air. <laughs> okay. Yes. okay. Perfect. <laughs> While I'm pregnant, let's do that. And then the other. Okay. I'm with you. All right, love. Thank you. Thank Bye. you everybody for tuning in. Share this with a friend. You know, your friend wants all of Lindsay Price's beauty tips, beauty hacks, nutritional, all that kind of stuff. Thanks guys for tuning in. Have questions you need answered? Text me at 1-310-361-8697. Make sure you're following me on social at Christine Bullock and have a healthy, happy week. See you next time.